Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solace and here's your detailed weather forecast update for Monday the 8th of September 2025. Heaps to talk about in today's forecast update. Plenty of severe weather and severe thunderstorms expected through central and eastern parts of the nation. Rainfall still on the forecast up in far north Queensland. Strong winter storms expected for southeastern and southwestern Australia and a very strong storm expected into the Tasman to see all the details on these storms plus a whole lot more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things today with the severe thunderstorm risk, which is currently ongoing through the Northern Territory, South Australia, parts of southwestern Queensland, and the northwestern parts of New South Wales. Yesterday, we had some very decent severe thunderstorms move through Victoria. They really gave parts of the southwestern part of Victoria around Apollo Bay and Geelong a pretty good walloping. Ballarat also copped a pretty good walloping from these severe thunderstorms. Uh, the uh, frontal system bringing those severe thunderstorms has now moved out into the Tasman Sea, and it's dragging down some moisture through the Northern Territory, which is going to spark some thunderstorms through the Channel Country of Queensland into the northeastern corner of South Australia and through a wide swathe of the Northern Territory throughout the course of today and a very early season severe thunderstorm outbreak and quite an unusual one for this time of the year. Let's talk about it right now. There's plenty of detail to crack through here. You can see thunderstorms are expected to develop pretty shortly. They're already beginning to really get themselves going around Moomba as you can see on the radar and the satellite imagery. There are some good thunderstorms bubbling up around here towards the northeast of Lake Eyre in a very remote part of, que uh, of the uh, central Australia and Queensland albeit so there's not a whole lot of people that are being impacted by these thunderstorms, that's for sure. But you can see convective activity already really getting itself going as we get into the later morning hours, and temperature is already beginning to climb quite quickly. 28 degrees here outside of Mount Isa, around the border uh, between the Northern Territory here, 29 up here at Coomerul, uh, and we're looking at temperatures pushing close to 30 into parts of the Northern Territory already. So the energy is there, the temperatures are rising, and you can see these thunderstorms are only going to become more expansive through the Northern Territory, South Australia, and parts of southwestern Queensland and northwestern New South Wales as the day draws on. We're expecting this thunderstorm outbreak to kind of happen in two, maybe even three separate parts. The first part is going to be these thunderstorm outbreak through the channel country of Queensland into the northeast of South Australia in this little pocket here. That's been ongoing for the last couple of hours and thunderstorms are expected to continue for the next few hours there. We're then expecting early this afternoon after about one or two o'clock local time thunderstorms to bubble up north of Alice Springs before moving in a southeasterly direction for Alice Springs and you can see widespread thunderstorms, potentially some severe thunderstorms expected to move through Alice Springs and around the Alice Springs area into this afternoon and into early this evening. There will be plenty of storms into this part of the Northern Territory here, kind of extending between a line uh, here from Rabbit Flat down through Alice Springs, through Fink, and then in towards the southeastern corner of uh, the Northern Territory. And then another line of thunderstorms expected here around Kintor and Docker River, and then across towards Giles into Western Australia. Thunderstorms are actually expected to make it right out into the Pilbara region of Western Australia as well. Thunderstorms are then expected to refire later this afternoon into early this evening through parts of the north uh, eastern corner of South Australia and then these thunderstorms are going to cross the border into Queensland later tonight into New South Wales later tonight into early tomorrow morning. These thunderstorms will upscale pretty quickly. We're expecting pulse thunderstorms to fire up initially and then they'll become very quickly severe thunderstorms into a large squall line later tonight and that will blow through the channel country of Queensland into the northeast, uh, northwest of New South Wales pretty quickly uh, from that point onwards. You can see rainfall then expected to become pretty widespread through New South Wales and this is where just a bit of a spoiler for what's coming up in the next few minutes. This low pressure system here in the Great Australian Bight, which is bringing showers to the southwest of WA this morning, moves into the southeastern corner of Australia and uh, combines with another low pressure system that's expected to develop. More thunderstorms expected through Tuesday. In fact, a really juicy thunderstorm outbreak expected through Tuesday into this part of New South Wales, South Australia and Queensland. And then that becomes the next low pressure system and that strong storm or the beginning parts of that strong storm that we're expecting to move out into the Tasman Sea. It's a very higgledy piggledy forecast. There are a lot of moving parts here and it'll take me a long time to really break them down into detail. So I'm going to really quickly oversimplify what locations are expecting what thunderstorms and at what times. Alice Springs, you're looking at severe thunderstorms, mainly pulse thunderstorms, but we could be seeing some straight line damaging wind threats, some isolated pockets for heavy rainfall, and some small to medium sized hailstones through Alice Springs later this afternoon into early this evening from between about 2 o'clock to about 6 o'clock before that thunderstorm risk does begin to drop off. Into the northeast of South Australia and then through the channel country of Queensland, widespread pulse thunderstorm activity is expected, tending to severe with uh, squall lines expected later tonight. Again, that brings the risk of damaging winds, heavy rainfall, and short periods of small to medium-sized hailstones. Tomorrow afternoon and evening into the uh, western half of New South Wales, on particularly north of Broken Hill around Wilcannia, Wanaring to Babura, and then across towards Burke and Lightning Ridge, we'll be seeing some more pulse thunderstorm activity once again, which could turn supercellular in a few spots. The convective available potential energy values for tomorrow are very healthy for New South Wales, especially for this time of the year, and that's expected to bring some widespread severe thunderstorm activity. Uh, and into this part of New South Wales, we 
could really be seeing some supercell thunderstorms take off, uh, which is quite unusual for this time of the year. But one or two supercells, definitely a possibility. Rotating thunderstorms always bring the risk of some pretty severe impacts. And for the north uh, western corner of New South Wales, it definitely looks like tomorrow is going to be one of those days. It's going to resemble more of a late September, early October outbreak of thunderstorms. Conditions very quickly change around this time of the year, four parts of Central Australia. I mean, if you think back just a few weeks ago, we are talking about sub-zero temperatures in this part of Central Australia. And today we're talking about temperatures reaching the mid-30s in a wide swathe of Central Australia. So it just goes to show how quickly things can change and how quickly the seasons are changing at this point in time. Uh, thunderstorms are expected to be an ongoing threat through this part of Australia from this point onwards and outbreaks or numerous outbreaks expected into late September, early October. And driven by that negative swing with the Indian Ocean Dipole, we're going to see increased moisture values and increased humidity and just increased fuel sources for these thunderstorms through this part of Australia as the year draws onward. So again, this is going to become the norm in the next couple of uh, months. But yes, yeah, some really good thunderstorms already beginning to fire up here. If we take a look at the infrared satellite imagery, take a look at how those cloud tops are developing. Quite an intense line of thunderstorms just towards the north of Mumbo right now, especially for this time of the year. And I would just like to say that for a November outbreak, this wouldn't even be worth airtime. This is a really weak November outbreak by comparison. But for early September, September, this is unusual, quite powerful, and certainly something worth taking note of. If you're traveling through this part of Central Australia, especially around Birdsville into the Channel Country of Queensland, I know the roads are still closed down to Lake Eyre from Birdsville. However, if you are traveling through here, beware that uh, with this rainfall that's coming through, if you do get thunderstorms, they could wash out roads and cause some pretty serious disruptions for an extended period of time. So my recommendation right now is if you are traveling, especially if you're traveling towards the east, get as far east as you possibly can today, uh, preferably towards the east of about Windora or Thug and Minda. Uh, the risk of thunderstorms drops off once you get towards the east of both of those locations. But hanging around here, hanging around Moomba, Inaminka, uh, even down towards Maree or Birdsville and Bidori and into the southeast, uh, the southeast of the Northern Territory, you're running the risk of being washed out and cut off for an extended period of time if rainfall does materialise. It's an unlikely and a pretty similar chance, but it is definitely one worth keep, uh, mentioning and keeping in the back of your head at this point in time. Now, again, I'm aware of how long I've talked about for these severe thunderstorms. Our first proper outbreak of 2025 uh, or, or of the 2020. 2025-2026 wet season. Uh, we're looking at this low pressure system then moving through New South Wales through tonight, uh, tomorrow night and into Wednesday morning. This low pressure system is going to quickly get itself going. We're expecting plenty of moisture to develop through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and widespread falls throughout the foothills of the Blue Mountains and the Great Dividing Range right up towards the Queensland New South Wales border uh, through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and into early Wednesday afternoon. Falls between 20 to 50 millimetres are expected. Isolated accumulations to 80 millimetres expected around the Snowy Mountains National Park with snow falling above 1,200 metres. And some good thunderstorms also expected around this low pressure system through Wednesday afternoon and evening, potentially into the Hunter region. Whilst severe thunderstorms are not expected at this point in time, we may see a few non-severe thunderstorms pipe up around Newcastle and into the wider Hunter region as well. This low pressure system will then get itself offshore through Tuesday, uh, through Wednesday night rather, and pushing further out into the Tasman Sea through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning, where it's very quickly going to intensify. The shift in the track has taken this low pressure system a little bit further north, which means Sydney is going to get slightly more rainfall and potentially a higher chance of thunderstorms and damaging winds than what we were talking about yesterday, but I'm still not expecting a widespread severe weather or severe thunderstorm outbreak throughout the Sydney metro area or the New South Wales coastline in general. Blizzard conditions are possible through the Snowy Mountains and some strong winds are still expected through the Illawarra coastline and that will extend into the metro coastline and the Hunter coastline as well through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. Take a look at these wind gusts here. This storm very quick to intensify offshore from the New South Wales coastline. Gusts rapidly approaching 130 kilometres an hour through early Thursday morning and they only get stronger through Thursday as well, in fact pushing above 130 kilometres an hour, getting close to 140 kilometres an hour in places through Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon before this system pushes further out to sea into the Tasman Sea. Lord Howe Island expecting a very good hit from this weather system here, so if you're watching from Lord Howe Island, hunker down, that's for sure on Thursday, some significant severe weather conditions expected. And then through Thursday night into Friday morning, this system moves out towards New Zealand where they're expecting a good walloping on Friday from this weather system. This is definitely an East Coast low, this is a very strong weather system, that's for sure, but the good news is it's not going to linger around the New South Wales coastline, so conditions are not expected to be too crazy for much of the New South Wales coastline. However, if we take a look at wind accumulation, which is the strongest wind gust in this selected period of time, you can see wind gusts around the New South Wales coastline, in particularly through the Illawarra coast and even parts of the metro coastline. We're looking at gusts north of Naruma between 80 to 90 kilometres an hour through Wednesday morning into early Wednesday afternoon, and then again in towards early Thursday morning. The strongest wind gusts will be around the Nelson Bay or Foster type area. We're looking at wind gusts there potentially approaching 100 kilometres an hour at a short period of time through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And some strong winds also expected through the Northern Table 
climbs around Armadale, Glen, Innes, and then Gyra. We're looking at some strong winds through the exposed mountain peaks in those locations too. Some strong winds are also possible into the Granite Belt and Coldfields region of southeast Queensland. We could also be talking about some strong wind gusts through the uh, snowy mountains as well, so we won't be writing off some significant wind gusts there. But at this point in time, this storm is definitely going to be a lot worse uh, uh, offshore. It's not expected to bring significant severe weather conditions towards New South Wales. So this isn't a system that's worth widespread panic or widespread preparations over. It's not going to be a classic east coast low that really hammers a New South Wales coastline for an extended period of time. It will just bring a few showers and some gusty winds here and there, beginning uh, late Tuesday night, persisting through Wednesday and then easing off a little bit through Thursday. We could likely see a brief period of heavy rainfall around Wollongong or through the Illawarra forecast districts somewhere uh, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. I'm probably going to be leaving it at about a four to six hour period of between 10 to 20 millimetres an hour with maximum rainfall accumulations around 80 millimetres or so to the 9am on Thursday morning. It's not going to be like the rainfall we have been seeing in the last couple of months through New South Wales, but it is definitely worth noting that some heavier falls are potential or are on the forecast at, you know, during that period of time. You can see this system then racing out into the Tasman Sea, as I've already mentioned, and then a high pressure ridge beginning to build for New South Wales. A few showers still expected here and there throughout the middle parts of September, but we're looking at much calmer, cooler and more collected conditions through New South Wales throughout the remainder of the short to medium range forecast out to the 22nd of September. Cold front still expected around southeastern, uh, or southeastern Australia through Victoria and especially through Tasmania. That's not going to change for another couple of weeks by the looks of things. You can see as I push this forecast forward here, cold front activity and just rainfall and snowfall through Victorian parts of Tasmania. In fact, a wide swathe of Tasmania is very going to be very frequent throughout the next 14 days. Uh, you can see it's yeah very much on and off and that's what we would expect at this time of the year. Uh, some strong cold front activity is expected here and there and towards mid-September and then again in towards late September around the 20 or uh, well, the 20th to the 25th and you can see rainfall accumulation is actually looking quite healthy across Tassie and parts of Victoria. Well especially to Tasmania you can see falls pushing close to 300 millimetres into the southwest wilderness national park which is typical for this time of year and cold front activity also expected through parts of southwest and western Australia. We're getting the tail end of one right now into the Perth metro area. This is the cutoff low that we're expecting to become that uh, kind of weather system for New South Wales or merge into that weather system for New South Wales and you can see a few good showers still moving around the south coastal region between Albany across to Esperance and some showers still moving into the Perth metro area particularly for the northern suburbs. A few more good showers are still expected throughout the course of today but rainfall is going to be pretty quick to ease off into this afternoon into early this evening and you can see pushing the forecast modelling forward we're not expecting anything too crazy throughout the remainder of the week. Rainfall could return this weekend with a few more showers expected here and there as a weak cold front comes through and up to 15 millimetres is possible through the Perth metro area and 25 millimetres parts of the southwest. We could be seeing more rainfall returning after about the 20th but we're not seeing some strong signals for that anymore and I reckon the strong cold fronts that we were looking at for into the later parts of September have now disappeared from the forecast modelling entirely. It looks like it is going to be a bit of a dry end of September from this point onwards. We're still well ahead of rainfall for the winter months and we're well ahead of rainfall right now for September so some dry weather will most certainly be welcome across southwest and western Australia as the harvest really ramps up into northern Queensland showers are still ongoing around the Casper coast you can see they've pulled a little bit further away from the coastline this morning but we have had some respectable accumulations overnight in the last couple of days falls between 30 to 60 millimeters through parts of the Casper coast much lighter accumulations around Cairns and as you would expect throughout the larger population centers of the Casper coast and down towards Townsville as well and those winds are now beginning to drop off throughout the Coral Sea as well a few good showers around Willis Island this morning and Flinders Reef still blowing at close to 50 kilometers an hour out of the southeast so the uh, trade flow is definitely still there and a few showers are still expected throughout the remainder of today but you can see for the most part showers and storms are expected to ease out of the Cape York Peninsula and the Casper Coast through tomorrow uh, just in the next 24 hours or so. There will still be a few showers as you would expect lingering for this time of the year before dry weather kicks up around Wednesday, Thursday and you can see dry weather expected right out to Friday before the rainfall returns on Friday and we are expecting some heavier showers to move through and some more frequent showers to move through on Saturday and Sunday as a bit of a low pressure trough sets itself up around the uh, North Queensland coastline. Now it does doesn't look like convergent zone weather, but this low pressure trough, if it does linger for long enough and we do see some steady but heavy rainfall developing around the Casper Coast, we're not riding off triple figure rainfall accumulations at this point in time. This is going to be a bit of a different type of rainfall to what we have seen over the last couple of days. It's going to be more sort of steady but heavy at times as opposed to just shower based or those very quick rainfall dumps that we've seen in the last week or so across far north Queensland. Rainfall estimates right now from the forecast models are pushing these uh, numbers up around the 100 millimeter mark, but you can see it's substantially more widespread through the Casper Coast 
coast right down to about, uh, I, I guess this would be well, further south of Ingham down towards Marginee uh, and uh, Townsville we're seeing rainfall accumulations pop up around that 20 millimetre mark. So rainfall accumulations more widespread and also slightly heavier and if you know anything about far north Queensland topography, rainfall accumulations can very quickly blow out from the forecast modelling here and we could be looking at triple figure or high triple figure rainfall accumulations getting close to 150 or even 200 millimetres here outside of Innisfail. Not saying that's going to happen but the forecast models can get these rainfall predictions wildly wrong and between other major forecast models as well with some decent rainfall expected to develop around coastal regions this weekend minus what the icon is saying here uh, it will be a bit of a waiting game to wait and see what rainfall does actually begin to develop but major forecast models are, are reasonably uh, on board with some proper rainfall developing around the Casper coast this weekend my best guess right now is rainfall accumulations between 20 to 40 millimeters isolated totals to 80 millimeters around Innisfail and Tully uh, and around Berlin and Kerr rainfall accumulations in the Cairns area between 5 to 15 millimeters nothing more than that and towns will also very unlikely to receive anything significant in the way of rainfall some good thunderstorms may also pop up through the Cape York Peninsula too a little bit inland from the Casper coast and over the Atherton tablelands so we'll keep an eye out for those as well but on that note, that's going to do it for today's weather forecast update. It's been an interesting one. The weather remains very exciting, especially for this time of year, early September, throughout a wide swath of central and parts of eastern Australia as well, and plenty to keep us on our toes over the next two weeks or so. If you're enjoying this content, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The support lately has been massively appreciated. And check out the Facebook page as well for some more content on uh, everything weather happening around Australia at this time of the year. Thank you so much to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. Their support is, as always, much appreciated, but that is all for me. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.